Welcome to the Fireside Chat as part of the Fox Hello. I'm Keelan. And I'm Skylar. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be discussing the complicated and critical issue of overcoming adversity. There are many types of adversity we face every day. Mental health issues are some of our greatest internal struggles we face in our day to day. How do we mitigate and cope with mental health adversity to be successful? And how do we help others? So we have a history of mental health issues in our family um such as like anxiety and depression Mm -hmm. um yeah we do so on our on our mom's side i can't say anything about our dad's side but for sure on our mom's side we have some mental health issues there that are kind of i mean i would assume that they're genetic because they yeah, because multiple people yeah, and multiple people have them. Yes. Um. So yeah, we just a lot of genetic things that have been passed out, spe- passed out, passed down. Specifically, um, depression and anxiety. I think we've had people. Haven't we had somebody? At least one person who's committed suicide in the family. Not committed. I think attempted, yes. I thought we had somebody that lived, like, back in the, back in the line. Back, back in the day. I'm not sure about that. And, like, our family history. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, de- definitely attempted multiple people. It seems like I know. Basically, basically everyone either has experienced or, like, has chronic depression or anxiety yeah. or dealt with other mental health disorders undiagnosed yeah (laughs) undiagnosed mental health issues like i'm not quite sure can only speculate but yeah but a lot of a lot of that and personally too at least for me (laughs) yeah skylar seems to be pretty uh mindfully sound i well I haven't had any chronic issues. I have had some experiential things. Like, there was a point in my life, um, briefly, where I was... I'm pretty sure I was depressed, but it was experience... It was... You know, it was based on an experience. It was, like, really brief, and it was because of a bunch of other factors, but it wasn't, like, chronic depression no and a lot of times too while you're younger like even when you're just like a teenager you can go through depression in your in your years of puberty i don't Um, count anything that i experienced because yeah (laughs) in my adolescence because i i experienced a lot of like emotional ebb and flow you could call any teenager bipolar at that rate but (laughs) it wasn't severe enough that like i ever went to go see a mental health therapist like a therapist a psychologist a psychiatrist like some people do and and then you can be diagnosed when you're even an adolescent but like i certainly had a rough go of it but i think most teenagers do yes and but no so but there were times there was like one point in my life where i was depressed for a brief period of time but it was based off of like where i was and what was going on and then a few instances of anxiety but i do not have anxiety like i don't have chronic anxiety or anything or like generalized that generalized anxiety right. like you don't have a disorder it's no. just and like everybody gets nervous everybody gets anxiety about different scenarios like it's just whatever you're well there's, you're I mean, there's put a in. real difference between like nervousness and like anxiety Actual, i never yeah. I, I never had a panic attack yeah either which is something very specific um but i have experienced anxiety which is very different from just being Mm -hmm. nervous yeah because you know people you get nervous so you feel nervous so you're like okay okay you're gonna have to do something but when you feel anxiety it's like you know it yeah um, and those circumstances for me have, I was thinking about this because at first I'm like, they've only been with 
kind of toxic people. Pe- for the most part, the people... But I was thinking a little bit more deeply about this, and I think that what it is is actually, like, irrational people who are confrontational. Yeah. Where I get into a situation where someone's not responding to a rational argument and they're being irrational, confrontational, and, like, spitting vitriol and stuff. And for some reason, I guess... And, again, it doesn't happen very often, but my brain just kind of, like, like, that fizzes out because I'm like, how could you be so irrational? Like, I can get into debates with people. Yeah. And we can be on the opposite end and be like, I just disagree with you, and that's fine. I love that. Mm -hmm. But when people are like crazy like off the deep end and they're being confrontational then it's like i don't know uh i haven't dealt with that very well i would say like if you have a chronic disorder you have the opportunity to figure out how to help yourself but when you don't experience it very often like i don't know what that's also something that's completely opposite because like i have social anxiety but that doesn't like give me anxiety when I'm in, like, that kind of, like, confrontational situation necessarily. Not all the time. It depends on what it is or, like, who it's with. But if it's with just, like, any random person, like, that's when it's better that I'm there with Skylar because she starts to, like, freak out and I'm fine. (laughs) I freeze up. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. And, And I think understanding like my steps forward because I'm so used to people responding in a rational way when they're irrational. I just don't I don't respond very well to that, but you I also, think that knowing like what your steps are to diffuse the situation and move on and move away from it are really important because when you start feeling anxiety and don't have that coping mechanism or don't know how to like divert your energy, then you're going to get caught up in it and you're going to get frozen. I so feel like me, too, I feel like part of your issue is that you love to talk and you talk things through and in an irrational person's mind they don't they don't hear all the words that you're saying (laughs) you have to say things in as few words as possible to get your point across to them because otherwise they're like they're just not i realize there's no point there's no point in trying to get your point across which is why you say few words to them because they're not going to listen and they're not going to understand and so for me like knowing the phrase and having it just right at my disposal to get out of the situation. So, for instance, so like somebody is being obstinate, then say for instance, I could say the phrase, I understand your feeling, I don't feel that way. So I think the conversation's over and just leave. Yeah. And just be done with it. So yeah, I don't know, just, irrational people are a thing yeah i can't i can't try to rationalize with them i just have to say no no (laughs) and that would help because when i try to when i try to engage and again like it doesn't work out yeah i typically how i i I deal with irrational people i i say as few words as i possibly can agree to disagree and just move on because like when you're on a subject and they're so passionate about it in like the wrong way or literally they're insane i'm not talking about people i disagree with here no it's like people well technically you do disagree with them but but i'm not talking about like (laughs) it's not an irrational disagreement like rational disagreement it's definitely an irrational disagreement where you would but think that like any sane person would off disagree with you. You know, because you've been there, you've experienced it. Like, this is irrational. It's like, oh, you should brush your teeth every day. And they're like, no. You should brush your teeth it, once a week. It's more like they're delusional, though. Yeah. It's like something And they're that, trying to blame... They're, 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 yeah, they're confrontational. Mm-hmm. And they're like... About something that's... Blaming you for something that you're like, but that's not the reality. Like, that's not mm-hmm. physical reality. Yeah. How many times has this happened? And I'm like, but wait, no, that's wrong. That's not real. And they're like actually delusional and blaming me for things that don't exist Mm -hmm. in the world. Never existed. Yeah. They're making up the the history of something. I I don't know. (laughs) So yeah, that's... Yeah. So having like something in your back pocket that's readily available, like a phrase that you can turn to like... 
for and situations that can leave make them. you uncomfortable or, or give you anxiety or like trigger you in any if, yeah if you way. feel like it coming on and you know it helps you relax is taking a walk just like say excuse me i need to leave this situation and, like go for a walk yeah because nobody's gonna we don't want somebody getting punched in the face. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> or I mean, it could be anything. Like if you if you could just get anxious about yeah whatever for whatever, whatever reason, mm-hmm. and you know what your coping mechanism is. Like anybody's gonna understand it if you're like, I need a second. And a lot of people don't even question it to like if you're to take care of yourself. Say you're at school or at work and something that like trigger something in your brain whether you have OCD or any any kind of like anxiety or depression anything that triggers like you just they're not going to question your mental health if you just need to take a step out or just go to the That's bathroom better. and just cool down for a minute it's better for you to take care of yourself and yeah. mitigate it and cope with it instead of like spiraling and letting it build up yeah because that's gonna be stressful and it's not gonna be a good outcome no so yeah anxiety is a whole thing (laughs) but i think i was getting to the point where like you know if you are just starting to experience like a chronic condition and you've never really dealt with it or you're like me and you occasionally have an experience but don't experience it every day or every week versus someone who has experience with their own mental health issue like you you have more experience about how to well you at least have more opportunity to discover your coping mechanisms yeah and, know and have what more knowledge of what you need of your mind and your body yeah. and everything versus someone who you have more training right in or a way you should at least yeah because you have the ample opportunity to like work it out and Experiment, yeah. At the very least, if you like, because it happens more often. Plus, you have typically like if you have an ongoing issue, you're seeing a professional. In which case, they give you tips and different things to try to find something that works for you. Yeah. Um. So I guess I'm I'm trying to provide some kind of advice or something to people in either scenario because you you have more of like that chronic like you know yourself better yeah you've experienced it over the course of time whereas mine is more like just sporadic um but i don't deal with chronic mental health no and the thing is okay so in my personal opinion and i'm sure in a lot of people's opinions Especially if you have a chronic condition. If you have a chronic condition, you obviously need to seek help and assistance in dealing with that because it happens to you either every single day or once a week or even once a month. If it's anything like that Mm -hmm. that you experience. Or seasonal. A lot. Yeah, or seasonal. Like if you have seasonal depression or something, you need to, you know, work with a professional to come up with a plan for your your mental health but then also just normal people who don't have anything wrong or if you like experience depression on occasion or you experience anxiety once in a while it's good to talk to a therapist and you don't have to go in every week you don't have to go in every month but to establish a relationship with a therapist that you trust and that you like so that if anything happens if a loved one dies if something occurs in your life that stresses you out to the point that you fall into a depression for a few months you need somebody that you can trust immediately to fall onto um so like if per se skylar you went like had a therapist that you had like gotten to know and whatever and like you had kind of talked about your little bits of anxiety and come up with some sort of plan and then you don't see her for a couple months and then you come back because you like went through a scenario where you had to talk to somebody who was being irrational 
and then you come back so that you can talk that through with your therapist see how you did with it and see what you know different techniques you can work on the next time you come about that the thing is there's always something that's going to make you uncomfortable in life or stress you out in life and that's what therapists are for they're not always there for they're not just there for people with mental health disorders and and stuff like that they're for everybody whether you are perfectly sane it's good to have somebody to talk to because there's stressful things that happen and a lot of so expensive a lot of people's well your insurance should cover it at least the first you know whatever few visits but then you know a copay or whatever even on the first yeah for for me the threshold isn't high enough like i don't have a chronic condition so no and that's the the amount of money that i have and could afford to put in doesn't justify the outcome because as long as i can sit down with a good friend and vent over a cocktail or a glass of wine i'm mostly good yeah i'm okay and i can meditate i take walks i can do my own stress management because i don't have a mental health condition yes but that's my other i recommend that people like i would if i had more money and it's not even just like again it's not seeing them you might see them like once or twice a year Real reason to see them you know like if you don't have a condition you might only see them once or twice a year if that but it's good to have somebody that you trust that you yeah, talk or about establish for a, few a connection times. with. It's just, I, yeah, I just haven't had a, a, a real reason to. Yeah. And you know that. enough money to afford. Or like the time. <laughs> yeah. So on the other but hand, I, if my it's next. It's important that you balance. My it. next thing yeah. is that not only like getting somebody that you trust, like a therapist or a mental health professional, even if it's your doctor. Because a lot of times, like, when you do your yearly checkup, they're not... ours are getting better about asking about stress management and mental health issues. Yeah, they're not, not like, all of them are, oblivious but. to these things. They went mm-hmm. to, through medical school. They know all of these conditions. They can prescribe medication for you. They can prescribe these medications, like antidepressants and anxiety meds and stuff like that. So they have some experience with it. And if that's just, like, somebody that you need to discuss a few things with, like, if, like... You're already in the doctor because you're sick or you have... Yeah, so... Uh, for your yearly checkup, you they should be checking up on, that, like, how are you feeling, you know, in your head, like... That brings up a checking good point up on you. because I was going to say, it's really good to see psychologists and psychiatrists who have experience with mental health disorders specifically. However, depression is one of those weird conditions that can actually be affected by really strange things Mm, like true imbalances in your body like you're not getting enough um of certain i've heard like some people get depression because they don't have like certain vitamins yeah or there's so many other hormone imbalances and so they'll literally get like a pill from the doctor that's just like a vitamin or like hormone or something that just like slightly raises the, your levels there and like brings it into balance and that poof, immediately like it's all just versus an in your brain that's the thing it's just chemicals yeah. in your body so that there's a chemical imbalance up. so yeah some medical doctors can actually be like oh you're not actually like depressed for yeah for like a reason that's you know wired into your brain yeah but your chemicals are just off because of a different scenario or which is why or hormonal or whatever which <laughs> is why different. a lot of yeah people, like postpartum depression mm-hmm. it's an it's it's just chemicals you weren't depressed before postpartum then your depression then you're depressed or partum depression because you have these different chemicals going on in your body yeah also with um chronic health disorders like you can list off so many different things like i'm sure depression is 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 a symptom of cancer and it's a symptom of it's for sure a symptom of MS. I know that depression and maybe anxiety, but I know for sure depression is. It's because those other things that are going on with your body, it's just like it a chain reaction. It Everything is interconnected. Yeah. So, so like if you have these, something else could be going on with you too. Is what you're saying? Yeah. It's like you have these it's not issues. Just depression. 
yeah it's it's to it huh. yeah it's not necessarily just depression which is a lot of times if you are feeling depressed you need to talk to your doctor about it not necessarily a therapist or something but to your doctor say like i'm Speak feeling depressed now all of your medical professionals mm -hmm. <clears throat> because, because if you have, have depression view of it if you have depression along with like a couple other symptoms it could be something that you mm -hmm. don't know or you don't think about but it, it's actually a symptom that changes everything because your chemicals are in a certain yeah. way um it could be an early symptom too like you could catch something earlier than you might have i'm sure brain tumors <laughs> but as they you say you, like it MS depends too, on which like, you could be feeling i don't know i don't know like we we still don't understand everything about the human body no. and the mind so i mean the brain is it's crazy it's weird yeah it is really bizarre and we we we're still learning every day it's every one year. of the least known organs in the body and it's who we are yeah it's everything is mm -hmm. like up, up which is why it's crazy why we don't know it all because that's where all our thoughts complicated. are complicated that's yeah, why exactly it's so complicated no one person could just like dissect it and figure out what everything went to and what everything was about but as you were saying earlier like about talking to a friend that was my other point is that like yeah a therapist or a medical professional so to talk to but whether you have a chronic or normal paid objective friend yeah <laughs> who can um, prescribe you medication yeah um but like whether you have a chronic condition or just normal you know every day not every day but <laughs> run of the mill sometimes have anxiety or depression um yeah you need to have a friend yeah. or somebody that you trust and talk to whether it's like a parent that you hang out with a lot and that you trust with private information or a sibling somebody anybody that's in your in your circle that or not in your circle because you know there's like aa and like sponsors mm -hmm. if you're going through stuff and you have i mean pretty much like somebody that would be like your sponsor um when you need them to talk about things that you're going through or anything like that whether than like Rather than spewing it all over social media, because I see so many people that are like, oh, this happened, uh, and this is whatever, and I'm really depressed, and I'm like... Yeah, I feel like it's just sympathy points. No, and it's but not healthy. Not if you are depressed... Doing something about it. That's not healthy. Because you're not, you're not asking somebody for, like, next steps. You're not, you know, confiding in somebody information. You're just spreading it's, the word that you're upset so sometimes i'm like i don't know if this is really a mental health thing people like are just trying to get attention and sympathy and that's why i really just, dislike it or <laughs> if they are but then they're not really treating it because they're not going to see anybody who's helping them. it's something that i'm very very passionate about is not spewing your mental health all over the internet for whatever reason like i'm gonna talk to maybe a couple close friends about whatever's going on in my life whatever's making me depressed or what's giving me anxiety at the time and you know that always changes but it's like spur of the moment somebody says something that makes you upset and you're you know you have you're depressed because this person left you like your husband or something they left you you don't go putting that on the internet and like talking trash or anything like that or you don't go saying oh i'm really sad i'm, I'm gonna kill myself it's like that's just yeah not and most likely if somebody says that on the internet and says oh i'm gonna kill myself they're not gonna kill their, themselves it's most likely for sympathy points because if they were actually planning on doing that they might confide that in like a couple people who they think might actually care because when you get to that well, point I, it's really sad but yeah. so many people just like it's like they either decide to do it and then without telling anyone through the steps to accomplish it and if you don't catch them in that time mm -hmm. and the only thing that you have to do studies show and like anecdotally we know like all you have to do is step in and be like no 
And typically, and people are like, oh, okay. Typically, like, people never tell you yeah. they're like, I'm gonna kill myself. That's never something that somebody who's actually you gonna just, kill themselves says. You just speak with somebody most of them. But yeah, again, usually people get caught. Like I've heard examples of, of people who they won't they won't say things like I'm gonna kill myself. They say, Generally, they're like, why bother living? Yeah, or they'll like, say stuff like that. Or you'll catch them in a weird location, like on top of a parking garage. Weird. <laughs> or mm. you know, they you know they you they you start the acting app. different. They, they will, start yeah. acting distant. They don't just put on the internet or like message all their friends and say I'm gonna do this or whatever because most of the time that's not what goes through a suicidal person's brain. Oh, but it's I would not. Say I'm it's, yeah. If somebody does do that, just give them the suicide hotline. Yeah. On. I, you know, I, I'm not sure about, like, you know, like, oh, no, we care so much about you, blah, 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 because you're usually a stranger anyway, so, like, I don't really know them, but you can be proactive, and you just give them the suicide hotline, and you can leave, so that's not really giving people, like, if they are suicidal, they have the tool, but if they're not, and they're doing it for sympathy points, like, you're not really giving them attention, exactly. you're just giving them the tools. So and, like, a lot of times, that is if somebody does, right. like... Because I don't want people to kill themselves if they really no. do want to, but you don't of know, course, so... If they say that, and they're being serious about it, then obviously you don't be like, oh, like, I'm calling bullcrap on that, but, but it's also really... not great if they're like, I'm about to commit suicide, and so you call the police on them. No. <laughs> because it has happened, and it will... I mean, if if people are, like, afraid enough... Yeah. It, it does happen. Mm -hmm. And you should. If you fear that somebody is gonna do it, you should intervene. Yeah, and, like, because the thing is, lives, if but... somebody is, if your friend does actually reach out and call like either maybe right after they've overdosed or something because a lot of times I know people who have ingested a lot of pills and then they immediately regret it because you start to feel really terrible mm -hmm. they immediately regret it and they're like I I did something bad and then obviously you call the cops you'd get them to the hospital you do mm -hmm. whatever you needed to do at that point once they seek help with you but if they go through with that if they want to actually kill themselves and like jump off a building there's not a lot that you can do other than be a friend to people and just be nice and considerate because at that point there's no but that's usually what stopping them. them from yeah doing because like there are examples so I heard an example of, and this was local, of a young man who was, a, like, acting kind of shady. He was, like, in the parking garage with this couple came back from the movies to their car. And the wife was, like, a little nervous because she thought, like, maybe he was, um, I don't know, up to no good. Like, yeah, he was stealing doing, stuff I don't whatever. know. Like, he's hanging out in a parking garage, so she was like, eh, you know, natural... <laughs> I, I say from like a woman's perspective a little bit natural like protection like I'm maybe like fear. but I don't know the, the husband was a police officer actually mm -hmm. so he's a little bit maybe better at like detecting certain behavior and he's like no there's yeah. something different like there's something weirder going on and he's like I'm gonna go talk to him and the wife's like oh I don't know but <laughs> but it was a good thing that he did because um he went over and he's just like, hey, what's going on, man? Like, what are, you, what are you doing in here? Because we have had a a number of people who jumped off of parking garages mm -hmm. in recent years. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, the guy was like, I, th I think that he was, I think that he, his girlfriend had just broken up with him or something, something bad had happened in mm -hmm. his life and he was really depressed and suicidal. Going through and it. And he was yeah. like, I, I want to jump. I want to end it. And he was pacing back and forth, and he was thinking about it, like, he was stewing on it, like, he was gonna jump. Yeah. And it was a good thing that this guy, like, went and talked to him, and he's like, uh, you know what, we're gonna, do you have someone that you can go and talk to? Um, you have someone that you can stay with? And he's like, yeah, my parents are in town, I can stay with them. And so, then they gave him a lift, and they, they drove him back to his parents' place. Yeah. Um, they saved a life, just by, like, 
talking to someone. Yeah. But I think it's really hard in that situation because, too, like, how do you know if someone is, like, dangerous versus, like, gonna jump off of a building? True. But it's good to, like, kind of be able to distinguish behavior. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But one thing that I have found is humans only have so much empathy to give before we're tapped out. Mm -hmm. We don't have infinite amount of empathy. No. And love, yes, we can love many people, but like empathy runs out at like a certain point because there's only so much that we can give out. So when people are moaning on the internet about like, what was me care about me give me attention and you're trying to give them empathy but at the at the end of it like people are going to get really tapped out they're going to get really disenfranchised by people who are doing that and, and then you're gonna not going to take mental health issues seriously yeah when they are serious and they're also going to stop caring me. about what you like a specific person if you've gone through it with that person mm -hmm. so many times they've gone back to the same place and said the same thing didn't like, do anything different and haven't done anything to help themselves haven't done anything different mm -hmm. in their lives it's it's going to drain you and it's it's not going to want to you want you're not going to want to be around that person anymore like talk to that person and and try to work on things with them cuz like they're not learning or growing or trying to they're help not actually themselves. talking things through with you either mhm mm it's like oh i'm just sad it's like okay then seek help if you're actually yeah what are you really next depressed steps? but if you go through like one specific thing and like like let's say your your dad died or something and like you would talk to people about that and like go through that and then if something else happened later on that made you upset like even if your like cat died or, or something or like or like you got fired or something else bad happened in your mm -hmm. life like that's something different that you can work through and talk to your friends about and they're gonna be there for you through all of those bad things because or they should can't, be there they should be there for you, you. Um, because those are things that just yeah. happen in your life that you can't control. But if you are, if you have chronic depression or anxiety, those are things that you have to deal with internally and not mm -hmm. just spread all over the place and like talk to 20 different people about because it's not going to help you. It's not going to help you recover or be able to work on things. Um, I almost think it's a proxy to, or like, um, oh, I hate this as well, but, like, basically saying, like, you're an entire trigger warning. Like, don't trigger me. Don't, you know, do X or Y because yeah. I'm depressed or I have anxiety and you're going to trip my trigger or whatever. Like, That's it's something... basically, like, putting it all on other people instead of, like, taking ownership for your own barrier. Like, yeah. I'm respectful. If you say, like, oh, don't use a word or, like, please don't talk about this because it's traumatic for me, like... Yeah, sure. I'm mm -hmm. going to be respectful of those things. But if everything is traumatic to you or if it's only traumatic when it's convenient for, like, your issue, like, yeah. that to me is dishonest. But I've seen it where people are like, oh, no, I'm traumatized by basically everything. everything yeah. And I'm like, but, well, that's not true. But it's also not my responsibility to not respect upset you, know. you yeah at every single turn so again i try to be very respectful with with each individual person but i'm not gonna know everything and that's and another I'm also thing not responsible too. either so specifically around like the suicide and, and depression thing just be nice to people that's mm -hmm. my biggest advice yeah. always is i, I think i mentioned it in the last yes. <laughs> episode is just, wow. just be nice it's, it's headline easy, of it's easy forever. to be nice i don't understand how it's like yeah it, at least it's easy because for, it could save a life it could better somebody's day it could mm -hmm. like it could be the one person that has been nice to them that entire day was at the grocery store and that was you 
Yeah. You were bagging I'm their groceries and you were nice to Thanked them. the bus driver. And that saved their life, you asked know? Asked how the, the Walmart clerk was this evening. I was like, hey. Look people directly in the eyes and, yeah. like, be genuine and nice to them. I don't know how people can just be mean and that's their natural state of being. Because natural state of being to me is just being and nice and being friendly. being mean to people. Maybe that's in Nebraska. Frustrates thing, and stresses yeah. everybody else out. It makes their day. I'm and then they're a, so and then you become done. a story. They're like, oh, I had this terrible customer I'm so who was, done with those people who was complaining about all this kind of thing, and I had to take their food back several times because it was wrong, and like they, <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever, or you know, like you become a story in their head because yeah. you were just that terrible, or you were that rude, or that mean to them. When you're nice, I remember strangers who were like awful to me when I worked yeah. in a restaurant. Like, I remember them to this day. It's been years. Mm -hmm. But I remember them because they were so terrible. But then you also remember people that are nice to you. Like, I know several, like, super mm -hmm. nice waiters yes. and waitresses that, like, at our, that are at specific restaurants that I love to have they're because they're just yeah. so nice to you. And or you're more likely versa. to, you know, tip those people. But it's also just way better service. And yeah. they deserve the tips that you give them, or well, and and it works the other way too, because like I I heard from another YouTuber, they were telling a story on one of their videos um, that they all had like ugly sweaters on, and they went mm -hmm. out to eat, and it was it was supposed to be a lesson on like how to make good conversation, um, but they when they had all these ugly sweaters when the server came up and the people in the surrounding tables, they were like, hey, whose sweater do you like better? And they were making a game out of it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that server is never going to forget that moment. No. Because it's so unique to have, like, customers who are that outgoing and are and engaging fun. with like, you they're just and being like, time. who do you like the best? Like, whose sweater is the ugliest? They and make like, you feel like you're friends with them. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, I... I, I paused the video and I was like, that server is never going to forget those customers. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, like I remember both the good and the bad from like forever. Yeah. So There's be a good very, story, very, not a bad story. Yeah, be a very life. good story. I don't know why it's so hard for people to be nice to other people, but I don't know. That blows my mind. I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I stranger, don't. what did they do to you? They're just doing their job, and, like, they're just being human beings. Because, like, I even, I had my days when I was working customer service where, like, you know, I wasn't, like, super outgoing and, like, asking about people's kids or their families or stuff like that, but I was still nice. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be mean to them because I'm having a bad day and, like, I have to go to work and I'm having a crappy day. I'm still going to be nice and I'm going to ask them how they're doing and if, you know, if they found everything okay and it, things that you typically say, mm -hmm. but, like, on those good days or, like, the people that, like, make your day better, they ask you how you're doing, like, even customers and, and I always know... Like, I still remember customers that I had that were, like, super fun and, like, always carried mm -hmm. nice conversations while, like, I bagged their stuff and checked them out and stuff like that. So, it's, you remember that stuff. And, like, yeah. you don't, it, it's weird, too, because, like, all those faces, like, they're, they become familiar faces to you as well. So, like, if you're walking down the street, you're like, oh, I, I know them from somewhere. And then, and then you remember, like, later, you're like, oh, right. They did this, and that it was really, it was like really feel cool. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, your brain, again, I with brains. I thought like, oh, I know that person in a positive way, but then I'm also like, I know that person in, like, a negative way. Mm -hmm. I know you're like, I can't hmm. pin them. I'm like, I don't know what I'm happened, sure but I don't like them. <laughs> something bad <laughs> happened, probably, yeah. but I don't remember precisely. So, listen to your intuition. Don't be a terrible person now. <laughs> Just be nice. Just be nice. I don't... Again, I don't understand. And yeah, again, talking about, like, the putting stuff on social media and, and stuff like that, it's something that I'm very, like, strong about. Like, I have a very strong opinion on mm -hmm. the fact that that should not be something that you do. Like, yeah. Facebook's real bad. If your grandma dies or if somebody dies in your family, you can post something and be like, my condolences and whatever and, and like you know, 
all, all that kind of stuff and you can do like one post but if you're constantly posting about this or if you're overly posting about somebody who's recently died or somebody who broke up with you or or something like that that it's becoming yeah. a big thing on your social media that then everybody knows like it, it's okay to post it like once maybe two times productive. maybe some pictures no you one keep is not reopening your... the wound for yourself too yeah you need to see a therapist about that whether like and, and again it, it's just like something that mm -hmm. that happens every once in a while or even just if it's stop posting only that. for you probably feel better about it if, if you, you stop, stop posting. posting about it because it's not listen to facebook be and if you have like again no. it's like the one or two people or like the small group of people or friends that you talk to talk to them oh about goodness. that i feel like people just rile themselves up it's true too but it's like just talk to the few people about it and like work through that work through the death or whatever's going on the breakup with your immediate friends and more politics like stop, whatever stop cut it out Social media, social media out. isn't going to help your depression at all. It's going to make it worse. No. Yeah. It's going to make your feelings exaggerated, Ooh. exacerbated, whatever. Both. All of the above. Yes. <laughs> Both of those um, things. Just going to stress you out way more in the long run. And then it's Unless forever going to be. talking to a friend online. Yeah. Like in a private chat. Yeah. We're sending each other. Like Danielle and I, when we're stressed out, we send each other goofy memes and stickers and pictures and stuff like yeah. when we're, we're having bad days like we send each other cute pictures mm -hmm. talk with somebody have fun with somebody i kind of in a way instead of you know complaining about so it. roger our dad yeah. does he sends out random positivity emails i um, just accept them is it on mondays and fridays i think sure sometimes on wednesdays because occasionally i don't I know which he sends days them whenever he wants to. he sends them whenever he wants to but typically they're either like monday wednesday or friday i think but yeah so he sends out and it either has like a goofy comic or like a meme in it or like just like an inspirational quote or something and like but it's it, he's got this like email list that he sends it out to that it's like these people then like read his brain and positivity and that might give them joy or like he's being nice and, and sending this out I, to people i accept his hokiness yeah um, but they are the most hokey things that you could possibly send out yeah like, it's true <laughs> if, if i were gonna send out something inspirational or mm -hmm. something that made you laugh it, like it would be something really funny yeah or something really inspirational his are, very... his are just like dad and dork well cause that's because it's his personality I know, it's who he's he is dad and he's kooky and he's super dorky so people who know him and he sends them out to it's like that's Roger. But there are things I swear he finds them on Facebook. Yeah, probably. It's Facebook trash. Yeah. But at least it's That's happy. What, mm -hmm. At least it's positive. That's what brings him joy. So <laughs> So I just accept them. I mm -hmm. I haven't asked to opt out of them or anything. Like I just accept it because that's that's a little taste of dad. That's yeah. what makes me happy about it. It's, it's not just his dorky things. Because if it were anybody else, I'd be like, oh, please, no, stop. Yeah. But because his dad, it just makes me laugh because they're so, they're so hokey. Also, with how many people are like still on his mailing list? I know. I mean, there's so many <laughs> that he accepted. that they just accepted, and maybe some of them some they of them actually really, really it. like it. Like he gets emails, and he tells me he's like, oh, so and so really enjoyed that one. Yeah. They me back. They <laughs> so many people back, love like, Roger. Oh, <laughs> they love him like, so really? much. Really? <laughs> the one with the minion on it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no more minions, please. Um, but yeah, it's just like the little things. And, and also another thing, just like keeping in touch with the people that you care about. Mm -hmm. um, like you were talking uh, previously in yes. other podcasts about talking to Natalie and, and uh, stuff. Yeah. I especially had to keep up with her in the winter because I know that she has seasonal depression. Yeah. And like manages, manages that. But so it's just like, oh, I need to send her some positive things and just keep in and touch that's like how to help people just like too. ask how they're doing yeah hit somebody up ask exactly. how they're doing ask how their day is and like if there's anything exciting going on in their lives also don't be boring when you talk to people that's something that's like <laughs> on my mind don't be boring. because i have people that message Hashtag, me and they're just like boring. they're di they just keep messaging me hey and like i don't respond and then they're like wow really that that's how it's gonna be i'm like you're not 
you're holding wait, you're a not conversation asking with me. a question. You're not asking you're me not how I'm doing. Telling a funny story to respond no. to. It's just hey. Yeah, which is why like I don't know. And they leave it on you like. Ugh. Yeah, and like it's and it's like tell I don't have the energy to talk to a random person yeah. that's just saying hey to me. Like if you want my attention, grab my attention. Ask me it's, how I'm doing. It's a shark ask tank how my out day there. is. Ask oh, if I've well. done anything interesting lately. Ask how work or school is going. Right, you have to compete. You got to draw people's attention. Yeah. You're just sending messages like hey and expecting a response like expecting me to hang out with you and associate with you you have like hundreds of people trying to get your attention yeah on tinder or just in general or wherever just like instagram on instagram on snapchat <laughs> like you know people, any kind of social media like people yeah they're they're all over the place if you if you have nothing interesting to give like you can't and i feel like the thing the is like people internalize this and they're like, oh, well, I was a nice guy or whatever. Like, I'm nice, but... You're boring. But then they're You're expecting not something in return for it. But then they're not really doing anything. Yeah. Like, also, so I have a friend who was talking to this guy. And she had... She's a published author. And she said, oh, yeah, I'm a published author. I have a book out. And his response was nice. Seriously? Yeah. Just one word. He said nice she gave him such a thing that he could have asked questions like oh what's your like, book wow, called that's so cool. or that's really awesome i've yeah, never like me met an that. author what's or it like to be a writer like yeah. what inspired he you could to have write asked like, so many things so many questions any any kind of interested in what she was saying or what she was doing with her life but he responds with nice and she can't give him anything back no in return. there's no response to that and when he comes back and be like, oh, that's how it's going to be. Like, whatever. I, I mean, to me, it's like, nobody owes you anything. No. Period. She gave you a piece of information about her life you that you should how to be, socialize. like, super interested in. So don't get all, like, and then people get angsty and, I don't know, if it exacerbates certain met- mental health disorders because they, like, already had them yeah. and they're not dealing with it. Or, like, they just get really angsty and pissy about it. And then they're like oh, woe was me, nobody likes me because, but I'm so nice and people don't like me. It's like, it's like no, you're not really nice, you're boring. Yeah. Nice Which is, is not, not the same thing as boring. No. That's what you're trying to say. It's like, yeah. be nice, nice to everybody. not the same thing as boring. Don't be boring. <laughs> it's asking how people are, not just asking what's up and saying nice or cool and like ending the conversation there it's like actually having a genuine conversation and caring about somebody so your friend is nice to the boring people but that doesn't mean you need to date them no or be friends even be friends with them exactly or hang out with them if they're not giving you anything it probably means they're they themselves are selfish or boring (laughs) or boring but usually i mean come on like boring too but a lot of those people if they're not giving or inquiring about you it probably means that they either don't care or they care more about themselves. Because, like, that's the thing. I don't think like, I live a very, do? like, interesting life where, like, I have tons of things going on that, like, I talk about. I'm like, I do music and I and I do school. But you're an exciting person. But I carry conversations in a way that, like, people aren't bored with me. Even though I don't do, like, a whole lot. Like, I don't go out and party. I don't go out and do this kind of stuff. Party but I can boring. Yeah. I can Ugh, sit and so hold a conversation with you and care about stuff that's going on in your life that nobody else will care about. And it's like, oh, what'd you eat for breakfast? I'm like, that's awesome. That's really good. Like, oh, you had oatmeal and a banana? Why is that your that's favorite That's a really food? good choice. Yeah. Like, I'm proud of you for making that choice. Like, I will carry conversation in a way that, like... you like, can be excited about anything. Yes! Or you can be interested in anything. I will be interested in anything. Like, even if, you if your life is the most boring thing ever, response? as long as you're holding a conversation. Right. If you want a good response from people, like, ask them why. Ask them their story. Yeah. Like, therapists. Find, find the one thing the why that they're is that? passionate about. <laughs> and you can get them talking about it. Like... I had a friend that I recently went to coffee with and we were we were catching up because we were pretty close a few years ago, but life happens and we kind of grew apart. And um, so we went out for coffee and I still knew this person fairly well because we were very close. So I figured the same things apply. I, I know how to make him 
feel good in the conversation and that's my new goal in life like how can I make the other person feel good in this conversation yeah. and so eventually I got to the point I'm like what video games are you playing have you played a really good video game recently because I know that he loves playing video mm-hmm. games and I got him to talk about this video game for like 10 to 15 minutes straight like no interruption like I chipped in a few times like asked a few questions or like oh wow that's really interesting but like seriously he ranted and raved about this thing for like 10 to 15 minutes that's what you want find that spark of joy in somebody that passion and inquire about that for your friend it's like that's her book like she poured her heart and soul into that yeah and the question would be like wow you know what inspired you to write that can you tell me about like the story and everything so easy because yeah. it was something that she was so passionate about just like that a she one sentence question wrote an entire book you know how hard it is for people to like sit down and write a whole book and, and publish book. it nice it's like <laughs> nice nice what i guess what i'm getting at is like if you want a fulfilling life like you have to make it happen yourself yeah you can't you can't expect other people to help you through tough times or make you feel confident like you have to be confident and you have to help yourself and then in you're in a situation where you can help other people like i guess what are some things that you don't like people telling you versus what you do like people telling you i mean when when you're feeling anxious and depressed like what's helpful language and what's not helpful to you personally everybody's gonna be different but what would you say I don't know. In a way, there's always those those phrases that you think would help, and they're not terrible phrases either, but, like, a lot of times if you're just, like, in it, you know that it's not actually going to do anything, mm-hmm. but then, like, I know that I've told other people the same things, like, oh, it'll get better. Yeah. In that moment, that person's not going to think, oh, it'll get better. Even yeah. however many right. times you say it will get better and you make it clear to them that it will they're not going to believe it. Like, you know, deep down they know that it will, but like... When you say it's, they're it's not going to get front. better. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it not going to get better. It it might, is, the thing is, like, that's a true statement. It yeah. might not get better, but how you respond to it can change over time. Yeah. So, like, that's something that I do... I always put that in, like, whatever. If I'm, like, talking to somebody who's going through it, I'm like, it will get better. The thing is, it will at some point... Yeah. Your life will get better. There's an ebb and flow. But then I always include other, other you know, encouraging things and, like, talk about their personal situation and, mm-hmm. like, what they can do to, to better it rather than just saying, it'll get better. Like, you'll get over it. Those are not good on their own. <laughs> Those are not good phrases. Just or, be like, you'll get over it. Or what I see on YouTube um, relatively recently were, like, whoa what was her face and she was like depression doesn't exist oh no (laughs) yes i know i know she's like oh it's made up it doesn't exist i saw another tweet where somebody was like autism doesn't exist and i'm like whoa really cool huh you cured it (laughs) (laughs) no i'm trying to understand i'm like well this seems like a conspiracy theory but then the conspiracy theories are the ones who think that vaccines cause autism so i'm like well it can't be that. It's just a whole nother level I, of I, yeah, crazy. Yeah, bs or Like, I just um, don't understand. But, like, some people... You, would, you wouldn't say that those are helpful things. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> your depression isn't actually real. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah. Just get over it. It's <laughs> fine. You know. Wow. That's not helpful. <laughs> it's, like, just talking no, to people. I think so being encouraging there's, and just being friendly. And there's not one and... thing that you can say mm-hmm. that'll fix everything. You yeah, just yeah. have to be there for them. Yeah. And you tell them, like, it's just you caring, honestly. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times, and, like, if you if you love and care about somebody, too, just reminding them that you love them. Yeah. And that you care them. Frequently. Often. Yeah. Definitely. It's just, like, randomly saying, like, I love you. Like, you're in my heart and you're around because a lot of times we take you don't remember granted. to say that or, or yeah. you, you don't think about it or you just get caught up and, like, don't think, like, the it's meaning so of love is actually, like, you just say it so frequently to one person that then 
it just becomes a norm instead of something that actually means something. So you have to like slow down and take a second and show them like, I that you care. I appreciate you for these for these reasons. I yeah. appreciate you for being you. Mm-hmm. And that's the best thing that you can do mm-hmm. no matter what. And like calling out specifically like what they're good at too and what they're passionate about. Like yeah, like if somebody was trying to comfort me or whatever, it's like your eyes are beautiful and and your voice is amazing and i and i love hearing you sing stuff like that that like specifically like between us that we care about or like you it's like oh you're such a good lawyer or like whatever (laughs) that you do that's that's hilarious yeah (laughs) it's like something that you do or that you care about like you're very passionate person just call out specific traits to that person that you care about and and that'll lift them up and make them feel like they matter that th- or that they're special in any scenario if they're just like sad i think it's like you make me laugh mm-hmm. because everyone yeah. loves that they can make other people laugh and it just you makes me that laugh you make joy. me smile any, yeah. any of that like yeah yeah so it's just it's just those reminders that you need to like slow down and just take a second to appreciate the people that you have in your life because they're not going to be around forever no that's the that's the thing they're not always going to be there so appreciate them while we have the time to do so yeah and make them feel loved and make their life more enjoyable so yeah um do you have anything else you want to no i I, talk about i think that's it so we're gonna continue to discuss our own experiences and overcoming adversity and how we can help others with their adversities um and uh yeah so we hope to see you next week and continuing this discussion if you like what we're doing here please consider becoming a supporter of the show The Fireside Chat Podcast is part of a new entertainment hub called The Fox Hollow. We have shows about money, gaming, music, legal comedy, and more on YouTube. And we post new Fireside Chat episodes every Monday. If you'd like to ask a question or submit a public comment to be shared on the podcast, please email us at thefoxhollowhub at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please become a patron by donating at patreon.com slash thefoxhollow, linked in the description below. You can follow us on Instagram at the thefoxhollow.yt and if you like what you hear please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss another podcast or video if you haven't checked out robin hood yet you definitely should robin hood is an online investing and banking app they give the power back to the people by not charging fees or commissions when you go to buy and sell stocks use this referral code to get started share.robinhood.com slash s-c-h-e-y-l-g-7 and you will receive one free share of a random stock and you have the chance to win some big name investments like apple and berkshire hathaway by using this referral code both you the listener my and myself will receive a random share of stock this is a great way to give back to the show while also getting a gift in return We post new podcasts on Mondays and videos on Fridays. Thank you so much for listening and see you next week. Bye. Bye.